Welcome to the Yabriel Yuta channel. This is my sister, Makaya. Shabbat Shalom. Who I also call my wife. Yeah. And I'm Brother Yabriel. Now, today, we've got a lot of friends. And what we found out is that a lot of people are just confused. And not only that, <laughs> they're living a devil life. That's right. Because they have a devil tongue and a devil mind. And no faith. And what? No faith. All right, faith comes by hearing, hearing comes by what? The word, they not read. You gotta get the word, you gotta read. So one of the biggest things we wanna talk about, we wanna, we're gonna go into three points. What are the three points Sister Makai we wanna talk about today? Well, first, we're gonna share some of our testimonies. That's very important today. because you need to know that this is real. Yes. That the Lord does come with us to his children he shows them things, he talks to them. Not only does he talk to them, he gives them prophecies and dreams and visions. Just back, like back then, he's doing it today. Remember in the last days, he said he was gonna do what? what? Pour out his spirit on his handmaids and servants. So remember that, we know that the women are the handmaids and who are his servants? Ourselves. So, this is something that we wanna go over because people don't understand that this is real. And if you're following, if you still stuck on the Moses laws, like a lot of these camps and these um, other Hebrew Israelite organizations and all of this, and you sitting there, you, you have no love, you stick to the letter of the law, which that was, all, you might as well be a Pharisee. That's why we're going to go through this and show you how Christ taught the difference between Christ and Moses laws. Not only that, we're going to give you some testimonies and visions that I've had that the Most High has given me. Sister McKay, do you have anything else to add to that, dear? Also, when we're sharing the testimonies, you'll see how he provides, warns, mm -hmm. uh, protects, mm -hmm. you know, and guides, uh, just as he did our ancestors back then. Mm -hmm. There you go. So, one of the first things I want to do is go with some testimonies, and I think this will kind of let people understand it this, because a lot of people, the Lord, the Holy Spirit doesn't really come to them. You know, they may have it in their mind or maybe thinking, but it's not what they think because they're in sin. How is the Lord? The Lord doesn't condone sin. He doesn't work with sinners. So a lot of times Satan will do things. He'll give you things to make you think you serve the Most High when you're really serving Him. So let's go through a few things. And one of the first things, I want to talk about um, is when I was young, you know, this is the first time the Lord first spoke to me and that I really heard his voice. And at that time I was staying with my dad and uh, we was living in a small town here in Georgia and he had a girlfriend and um, she was pretty mean. Now he was only a kid, he was 17 in the military and every night he went to work 11 at night, 7 in the morning. But every night this lady would wake me up because she was jealous of my mother and obviously the relationship and she would do different things, you know. She would make me drink toilet water. She would put a plastic bag over my head um, to the point where I almost pass out. She would put me on the back porch and, you know, in Columbus, Georgia, I remember at that time, most hot water tanks were on the back porch mm -hmm. and I remember it would be snowing and she set me out there and it was like, wow, I just remember like it was yesterday. And I remember she turned the water, they would always turn the water up because hot water tanks were on the back porch. And I remember one night, she filled the tub up with nothing but hot water, nothing but hot water. And I was four years old. Wow. And I remember she told me, she said, get in. And I, and I touched the water, but I could see the smoke coming. I'm like, I can't. I said, I can't. I called her name. I said, I can't. I can't get in. It's too hot. And she said, get in. And the eyes got real big. She said, get in. And as she said that, all of a sudden, I heard this spiritual voice say, son, get in. If you don't get in, she's going to drown you. I'll protect you. And I was only four years old when I listened to that voice. And so when I went to get in the water, I just remembered that it was so hot that I was screaming. I said, I can. I called him. I said, I can. She said, get in. And the boy said, get in. So I got in. And when I did, I was shaking. And I remember holding the tub like this. 
And I remember I was shaking. I said, please, can I get out, please? And she, she said, get out. And as soon as she said, get out, I got out the tub. And I know it was the Lord because normally with the water's that hot, you know, as soon as I got the tub, the skin fell off both of my feet. It just like peeled away. And, but I wasn't burnt from here all the way down. My private area, my legs. I do remember now my shins, they did bubble up too. I lost skin on my shins. But one thing I do remember vividly is that the Lord told me, he told me to get in or she would drown me. And I was like, wow. And I didn't know, but it's like, I knew things without knowing things. It's just like it was always in me. And then the next thing happened, my dad, of course he comes home, he wants to know what happened. Now, any child, when a parent asks them a question, what do they normally do? They that, tell them. That age, they, they're four. they would have told. They would have gonna tell it, happened. you know? But guess what? Praise the most high. Uh, I remember my dad asked me what happened because he took me to the hospital the next day. And the doctor told him that she said that I bought hot dogs. And he said, the doctor said that's not possible because if that was the case, his chest would have been burned from pulling it off the stove. That something's not right. So he repeatedly asked me, what happened? Tell me what happened. What did she do? And then when he said it to me, that same voice that told me to get in, if you don't get in, she's going to drown you. told me, don't tell your father. Because if you tell your father, he's going to beat her up. And if he beats her up, you're going to be stuck with her. And you're going to be worse off. Don't tell it. So I didn't say nothing. I was like, it's what she said, that the hot dogs came off the stove and, and, and they went on my feet. And he was like, tell me the truth. He said, Junior, he called me Junior, tell me the truth. And I said, that's what happened, Dad. You know, it came off the stove and, and, and I mean, and it fell on my feet. He said, okay, so I'm taking you to your mother. That's all I wanted to hear. I was taken from my mother two years old. My mother didn't even know. She, he was supposed to come right back with me. I remember I was two years old. He was, I mean, and, I, and he asked me, do you want to go with me, Pop? Now, any child will miss their dad. And I said, yeah. And I remember that like it was yesterday. But I didn't know he was taking me from my mom. And I didn't see her in two years. And I remember every day I would picture a lantern in the window with my grandmother's house. And I would picture my grandmother with my cousin on her little belly with going up and down. And I missed them so much. So when my dad said, I'm taking you home, my heart rejoiced. I'm gonna see my mom. I'm gonna see my grandmother. Then I remember we got in the car that night. And I remember he was talking about wrestling. He loved wrestling back then, you know. He was an avid wrestler. And we was talking about wrestling. He was going over it. And then halfway down the trip, I remember he said, okay, you can tell me what happened now. We're not there. Now, most children would have been like, okay, dad, this is what happened. But before I could even open my mouth, the Holy Spirit told me, do not tell him because he will turn the car around. And he will turn the car around and he will beat her up so bad that you will never make it to your mother. And I said, no, dad. I, I, so I kept with the story. I told him that's what happened. I would not tell him anything different. And finally, finally, I got to home. And I remember like yesterday because my mother was playing Marvin Gaye, let's get it on. Now the Israelite right now, that song we played, but back then that was good music to me. And I just remember I saw my mother's face of the best day of my life. The best day of my life. And then to make a long story short, I didn't tell my dad the truth to about what, seven years, I'm talking seven years old. So that was three years later. And guess what? When I told my father, he ended up going back and cutting the lady from here to here before she did to me. So what the Most High told me was prophetic. He would have done something to her while I'd have been stuck with her. And he, and he showed me when that happened. So these are some testimonies that I want to give you because that's the first time he spoke with me. And I'm going to give you some more to let you know how the Lord truly works with his children. Matter of fact, me and my sister Micaiah, my wife was about money. She's a realtor. And she's not only a realtor, she's also a property management company. So when we're going through a little time where, you know, I wasn't making as much money, she was trying to get the money. We had some back and forth because my thing is, you know, money isn't everything. And at the time we were going through a little this and that. And, and, and what happened was, I remember just like it was yesterday, just like it was yesterday. I remember the Holy Spirit rushed in the house. And the rush, Holy Spirit came in, she was on the phone with me. She was in the car with this investor guy. 
um, and another lady who was a real estate agent. But the Holy Spirit rushed and told me that this guy was not right. Not only did he say he was not right, he showed me a reel. And the reel went on. He said, this man is the master of all medicines. Not only is he master of medicines, he teaches doctors and pharmacists on all medicines. And he means your wife no good. Then he went through a vision. He showed me what he was going to try to do to her. It was like it was like I was right there. I kid you not. And I couldn't believe it. And all of a sudden, my body got ice cold. It was so cold that in the winter of the summer, and my wife's a witness because she came home. She saw I had a hat on, I had a jacket on, a coat, and I had jeans on. And I was shaking profusely. Mm -hmm. She's like, "What's wrong with you?" I said, "She said, what's wrong?" I said, "The Lord told me that you need to come. He needs to fix you." He told me he needs to remove that veil from your face and he needs to take six layers of skin from your eyes. She was like, what? I'm like, I don't know. I said, just go in the room with me. We had to go in the room. And as I went into the room, all of a sudden the Lord showed me a vision and he showed me a vision. I seen two fingers in the air. He said, this is you and your wife. He said, you're like a magnet that's broken. You know how you break a magnet and it's turned the wrong way. You try to force them together, they don't go together. He says, but I'm gonna twain you. He said, for seven days. For seven days, you don't leave your wife's side. He said, for seven days, I'm gonna do a wonderful thing in your life. I'm gonna change you. I didn't know what was going on. I just related to my wife. And all of a sudden, he said, I'm gonna make you, I'm gonna twain you as one. And I was like, wow. I was like, Michelle, the Lord is telling me that, you know, he got, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I said, Michelle, the Lord told me he wants me to give you prayers that you prayed to him. She was like looking at me crazy. She was Jehovah's Witness. So as Jehovah's Witness, they don't, they believe that, what do they teach Jehovah's Witnesses? That he doesn't communicate with us directly anymore. Right. So she was looking like, I don't know what this boy talking about, but okay. So all of a sudden, the Most High gave me how many prayers? Three, was it? No, you said two, right. word for word. Now the first prayer was when I actually prayed for him. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know he existed, basically. Right. I was 19 at the time, mm -hmm. upset at how my life had, had come out. Because um, I've always loved the Most High. Right. And um, I prayed for a husband, and I was so upset I didn't speak on that the point. words. You heard what she just said? That's a key thing. Before I left Florida, when I was going through something with my first wife, I prayed for a woman who's spiritual. I prayed for a woman who loved the most high. I prayed for a woman of my race because my first wife was Puerto Rican and a lot of stuff she just didn't understand. She just couldn't. She was Puerto Rican and her mother was white. And so I, I she was kind of, even though she was raised by a black father, a lot of things that we go through as black men, as Israel, she couldn't relate to and I couldn't give it to her. And that's why I prayed for a woman of my tribe, someone who I could, because I saw so many of our black women, especially coming from Florida, who didn't have a man. So I prayed to the Lord to give me a woman who wouldn't leave me all the time and run to her mother, who would put me first, and who would also iron me a shirt if I asked, because <laughs> she didn't want to iron me a shirt. And it was even bad when we would go to a restaurant, she wouldn't even fix, I mean, excuse me, we'd go to a party, she wouldn't even fix me a plate. And I would get embarrassed in front of my friend. When, 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 when she left, I prayed to the Lord and I got on my knees and I prayed so hard and heavy. And I thought I saw a sign because I was looking at TV and I saw Preflo Dollar talking. And I say, and Preflo was talking and talking. And I say, well, maybe this is it, you know? And at the time I had no idea that that was such pagan teachings and everything about this man was not right and corrupt. But I was just looking for anything. I was just hungry. But I got on my knees and I prayed, and I kid you not, my cousin called me out of the blues from Atlanta. And it's like the Holy Spirit told me again, when you go to Atlanta, you're gonna find a wife. But your wife is gonna be in college. I kid you not. So my cousin came down and picked me up and I ended up coming up here to Atlanta, Georgia. And ironically speaking, I was looking for my wife. For the first year, I didn't date nobody, I stayed to myself. I just want to get myself right. I just remember when I saw her, one thing about her that really got me was that she's like, she glowed. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, and when she talked to me, I'm like, Lord, is this one? Is this the one? 
and I'm a manager, you know, and I'm like, can't be, because she's too young. Because, you know, I was 30, and I think he was 20, 20 years old. And I'm like, nah. Mm -hmm. But then he said, she's in college. So I'm like, wow, you can't cheek a chicken. You want to say, can't cheek a, uh, what, an old bird new tricks or something, old mm -hmm. dog new tricks. So since you can't teach the old dog new tricks, maybe you want to get someone who I, and I didn't have to sit there and get rid of all their old baggage. But everybody has baggage, young or old. But to make a long story short, he brought this moment into my life. And then when he came into our life, everything came full circle. So we're gonna go through these scriptures because I need to give you some testimonies. And we also wanna give you a little understanding of how he did us, how he works. Because I remember when I first came to my wife, you know, I was telling her how the Lord was talking to us. And I remember she stretched her hands to the heavens and she swore on something. I said, Michelle, don't do that. Cause if you're lying, don't do that. Now this is before I even knew how we raise our hands to the heavens and receive the Lord. The Lord just put it in me to know. And then 14 times, things weren't true, and 14 times, the Lord run a movie reel right along the shelf. How did you feel when he was- what happened. Uh, when, 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 when that was happening, how was you feeling? <laughs> Imagine you telling your husband and one thing. And vice versa. Right, same here. Where he showed me things. It, yeah. So, reveal. Reveal things, things exactly. Yeah. Because at that point, when the Lord comes to your life, when he says you have to be reborn in he water purges. and also spirit, he purges all that sin. So I had to admit anything I'd done wrong and likewise she had to do it. Mm -hmm. And we had been together at that time, having 16 years at yeah, that time. About 16, 16 years. years. Yeah. So, you know, he beat me from the inside out because I was, I was still a whelps on me from the inside out because I had to confess my sins. Not only to, my, to him, but I had to confess them to my wife. Likewise, she had to. Thank God, you understand, that it was nothing major that we couldn't fix. That's right. It was just basically disrespect, and it was also a situation where you taught, a man don't tell me what to do. I'm gonna do what I wanna do. <laughs> so, when all that came out, I got a little better understanding, so. But we wanna know, how many times um, were you amazed at what the Lord was showing us? Well, it wound up being nine days, and right. every day it was just amazing. We fasted all that time, did not eat. How did I talk? Drink. In he parables. talked in parables. The whole time. The Lord had me talk I in mean, parables. It was he said, just if you, amazing. It was amazing. He was like, Your wife, I look at her as like a rock. He says, And you should hear is the wisdom that I give you, son, to give her. But when you pour it on, it rolls off. He said, I need her to be like a sea sponge. He said, so when you pour that wisdom on, she absorbs it. He said, I liken it to a cup when a man goes to a well. And he hands a man a cup. And then he gives him a pot full of knowledge. But when he pours it into the cup, it has a thousand holes in the bottom. And it goes right to the ground, to no avail. He said, I'm going to seal that cup. So when you give your wife what I give you through my son, that she'll retain this wisdom. So it was prophetic, man. It was pretty deep. It was real deep, you know. And so we're gonna just go through some scriptures, and then I'm gonna give some more testimonies and visions also. So you understand this is real because the Lord, He loves those who love Him. You can't have a devil mind or devil heart and follow Him. The first thing He's gonna do is convict you. Once He convicts you, you gotta do what? Repent. Then we do a right. cleansing stage where we had to repent and everything. That's right. And I had to make a choice. You know the scriptures say, you cannot serve Yah and Mammon. So here I am on this crossroad. Do I stick with this client who the, the Most High is now warning me what this person's intentions are to the detail well, of what he was planning yeah. to do? Or do I choose the Most High in my family at the mm -hmm. end of the day? So he actually showed my husband the past things what would happen if I different told routes. He showed me different each routes. Route he showed him what would me. happen. He even showed me the man's car. He had black leather he had black Mercedes with tan seats. So then he showed house. me also mm -hmm. a house wow. that he was gonna try to take my wife to. Because we found out later when I told my wife the Lord took me mass off medicines, what did you tell me? It com he confirmed it the next day. And I way? didn't even know. I'm thinking he's just a doctor. But my husband said, no, the Most High is showing me he's a master of medications. And, and I had a meeting with him and 
some other people the next day and I asked, I said, well, what are you doing here? And come to find out, he was contracted by pharmaceutical companies and doctors and he would teach them how to administer medication. And the Lord the showed me company. a pen and he showed me how he would stick my wife real quick because he knew she wouldn't have sex with him. He had to trick her, but he showed me he took her on by Moreland. Then he showed me these two gates he took her through. Then he showed me the code that he punched in. Then he showed me the, wall, the, the, the garage with a brown garage, double, and he showed me the apartment. And I went and told my wife, and what did you say? That was his daughter's house. He described it to a T, where it was, everything. I didn't know these things. He didn't even know these people. I don't know these people. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit fed me these, just like she fed me since I was small. You understand? And we have more testimonies I'm going to go through. But first, we're going to read Deuteronomy. We're going to go through Deuteronomy 18 and 22. Because there's so much that we need to um, understand how Christ walked and how he taught us under the new covenant we should be walking. Because our people today are lost. A lot of them have so much hate in them. They have so much to sin in them. You understand? They're not, hear they're not doers of the word. They're just hearers of the word. What our people do, they serve the creature versus the creator. And that's the problem. Sister Micaiah is going to read. Go ahead. You have something to say? So this scripture here mm -hmm. basically is where the Most High makes it clear. How do you know when uh, a prophet is from him or not? All right. Because there's a many people who claim to be prophets. A true prophet. Well, as a matter of fact, let's just read. Go ahead, Sister Micaiah. This is uh, Deuteronomy 18. I'm going to start with verse 21. It says, and if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which Yah hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of, the, of Yah, if the thing follow not, if it doesn't come to fruition, nor come to pass, that is the thing which Yah has not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of. Okay. You got to understand that a lot of people are false prophets. We're going to go through some testimonies. I'm going to prove to you. The Lord will show you one thing one day, and it comes to fruition many times. You understand? Matter of fact, with this person, this so-called doctor, the Lord told me this. He said, I want you to, on the fifth day, he said, don't eat. I couldn't eat. We didn't eat. I lost 15. We lost 15. I lost 15 pounds. That was the last day. That was the last day. Uh huh. You tried to eat. Well, that was the fifth day. It was on the fifth day that happened. That's when, I, that's when I tried to call, it was on the fifth day. I remember very well. I tried to eat on the fifth day because I didn't realize we was fasting. My wife had to tell me. She said, we fasting. I said, we haven't eaten in three days. Mm -hmm. We didn't even realize it. We didn't want no food either. Mm -hmm. And then I tried to eat on the fifth day. Guess what? The Most High made me throw it all up. He said, you have to get rid of the demon. And I remember when he I felt a helmet like come on. I felt Barry on. I felt when I said, Michelle, I felt a helmet clink on me. And he said, I give you powers to cast away demons. And I couldn't believe it. I told my wife of what I was hearing. And he told me, tomorrow, I want you to say to this man, Dr. Such and such, my husband knows what you plan on doing with me. He's a man of God. And he knows what your intentions are. He said he's not going to deny it. What he's going to do is say, okay, then where do we go from here? That's exactly what my father told me. What happened the next day? And he... that's exactly how it went. Then he said one more thing to me. He said exactly one day from this day, one he's going to, one year, Salakia, one year from this day, he's going to try to contact your wife again. What happened? Exactly as, it ha as he said, that's what happened. Now, we know that the order is that the child answers to the woman, the woman answers to the husband, the husband answers to who? Yeshua, and Yeshua answers to who? The Most High. That's the order. So the husband is put there as a protector. When you read husband in Hebrew, one of the one of the word, the letters in it, it, it stands for a protector or covering or by L, a lord over. But well, our women are taught what? A man don't tell me what? What to do. Backwards. So what happens is when you do things out of order in your home, that's when these demons and spirits come in. The Lord showed me this man was a master. He said, he says, why do you think he, he said he's wealthy? He says, my, your wife only knows about 0.00005 of his wealth. 
<laughs> he told me that he owns, but he showed me, he said he owns Dollar Generals. He owns this, he owns that. I'm like, whoa. So I went to my wife. I said, Michelle, you might think you know what he owns, but you don't know what he owns. The Lord showed me you only know .0005 of what he owns. And what did you tell me? It was true. He had a whole binder of assets that I knew about. So, so yeah. So what I'm saying is, and I mean, that's just one aspect. And it got even deeper as we went on through the walk. Um, I'm going to share a prophecy. I'm going to share a few prophecies here, actually, that I saw and my wife's a witness to it. One time we was me and my wife, we went to Columbus. I remember when I gave you the story of the woman who abused me when I was little. Well, the same woman ended up having a baby for my dad because when he went back, he didn't know that she did what she did, so he made another child with her. Which later on, my brother ended up telling me she put him in a tub of hot water too and he was floating, he almost died. His stepfather found him in Germany. But I carried this picture around from 12 years old to what, 29 years old. And I, I had finally lost this picture. But miraculously, some kind of way, I got in touch with my brother. He lived in Columbus, Georgia. The same place I used to live as a little boy when I was abused. So I went to visit him, me and my wife, we went to visit. And I think Jelani was a baby then, right? Mm -hmm. When we went to visit, he wanted to go over his friend's house. So I said, okay, now my wife, she's sitting in Columbus, she's bored, but she was like, she's being respectful, you know. Um, one of the few times at that time, at that young age, she was respectful <laughs> when I'm taking too long, but that day she was being respectful. So my brother said, Junior, I want you to go over here with me. So my family calls me Junior. They said, I want you to go over here with me. He said, I want you to go to this trailer with me in my buddy's house. So I, I said, okay, we get in the car, we go. And as I go up to the door, you know, and, and, and mind you, this voice, and remember, and I'm going to just say this, I'm going to segue real quick. When we was in, living in these apartments, I remember I came to my wife and I told her about I seen these buildings going down. But they were high, they were super tall buildings, and people jumping out, jumping out, jumping out. And I'm like, Michelle, I don't know what's going to be, people are going down. She called me on my job two weeks later, and I remember this well, I was running a restaurant. And she told me, what you saw is happening right now, remember that? Mm -hmm. She called me. She said, the buildings are going down exactly as you saw them. I was like, no, are you kidding me? When I turned the TV on, it was exactly as my vision. It was the Twin Towers. It was the Twin Towers in New York. It was exactly as I saw it. The difference was, I didn't see any planes in them. I just seen them blowing up and going down. And I seen people jumping. Which we found out later, there was a, it was a hologram. There, there was no planes. But the next thing happened, when we was at Crestwood Apartments, remember I was running mm -hmm. and I had a vision and I thought that I seen a window, it was a regular window, but all of a sudden this window became six feet wide. I take that back, about 20 feet wide and it was so high and then bodies was floating everywhere. I mean, they were, you can just see the seaweed and water and everything. And I was scared. I started running because it like it was coming in the house. I was running. I was like, Michelle, we, I said, we got to run. We got to run. And then you grabbed me, right? Mm -hmm. And what did you say to me? You having a vision. You having a vision. Two weeks later, what happened? That tsunami in India. Two killed weeks over later. 300,000. Two weeks later, I saw that tsunami. What, what I saw was that tsunami that happened. That was in 2004. And, it was, two, and it, it, it was exactly, it happened exactly as I saw it. And I was like, she was like, you saw this. So, when I saw, heard this voice, when I was in Columbus, Georgia, and I went with my brother and we went to the trailer. I already knew the Lord was starting to show me things. He was starting to, he was starting to step it up. Not only is he showing it to me, it would always come to what? Pass. It would always come to pass. So as I'm sitting in the trailer and I would go to the door, the Holy Spirit, just like when I was four years old, I heard that same voice, son, leave. And I looked at my brother and I was like, hey, Keith, is it okay that we be here? He was like, Junior, yeah, these are my friends, you straight. So we opened the door. Now when he opened the door up, I kid you not, man, I felt like darkness, I can't explain it. It was like this eerie feeling hit me. Hmm. And I said, Keith, we need to leave. I, I, I don't think we need to be here. He said, Junior, these are my friends I grew up with. So he said, I'm from here, you straight. I've been with these boys all my life. He said, trust me, do you trust me? I said, I trust you. He said, trust me. I said, okay, and we sat down. As soon as I sat down, the Holy Spirit said, leave now. Hmm. I got up, I grabbed my brother's hand. I said, I'm going and you going with me, trust me. He said, he said, what's wrong? I said, trust me on this. 
So we left. When we left, my wife was kind of pissed. She'd been sitting there, she bored of Columbus, ain't nothing going on. She's like, I'm ready to leave. So the truth, <laughs> so the truth her came out then. She like, I'm ready to go. So we proceed to get in the car, we leave. As we leave, 15 minutes later, what did he call and say? He said four people, it was a drive-by at that same trailer where they were, and four people wound up getting killed. Now, we had just left the trailer, and the Lord told me this was gonna happen. I was I, 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 we were away at our mouths open. Yeah. Well, my wife was like, wow. Mm -hmm. So some of that Joe Witness stuff was gonna fade off her, right? Mm -hmm. So when you see these things happening, know that it's for a reason. Mm -hmm. You understand? The reason vision I had, I had a vision of I'm out in this place. And it wasn't just me, it was people behind me, a bunch of them. And we were just trying to find somewhere to go. Why? Because if I looked up in the clouds, everywhere I look, there was a storm coming, but it was so ominous, and that's the word I'm gonna use, because in the vision, that's what the term was used, ominous clouds. They had like brown streaks in them, they were everywhere. They like real light brown, but then it looked, it was scary. It was so scary that my heart, I felt like my heart was gonna stop. And as I looked, I said, we gotta find somewhere to hide. But as I looked out in the vision, I knew that there was no way to go underground because they didn't have any underground places. And not only that, as I looked at all the houses, they were stucco. Because I'm from Florida, and the houses that kind of were storm, standing the storm, they all made a solid brick, a lot of brick. But none of these were. The only places that were were these big old like apartment buildings like, but even them, they still had stucco. So and my heart was, I was so afraid that everybody with me was so afraid, we didn't know what to do. I'm gonna say why, because there was nowhere to go. And at that point, I say, Father, I know you're showing me something. Can you take me out of here, please, right away? Take me out of here, please. I kid you not. I saw Bahamas. That is exactly what I saw. Those were the houses that I saw. That was the place that I saw. And now it makes sense why we couldn't go in the basement because there are no basements there. Our people got to come out of sin. The problem with our people, they don't understand this. The Lord said he's going to book over die. He said he's going to visit who? Esau, the one who got us here. But also another thing he's going to do, he said he's going to visit us. The Lord wants us to repent of our sins. Mm -hmm. Just like Noah said he wouldn't do it, he shook the earth up. Then he brought the floods. Revelation said they won't do it again. We have to repent of our sin. In Jamaica, didn't our son tell us that they prayed? They prayed. They all got they together and prayed, and yeah. the storm went around them. Do you think the people in Bahamas prayed? They prayed, but they didn't pray till it was on them, just like the people did on Noah's boat. That's why we gotta understand. The Lord says he's coming like a thief in the night. He's giving us all the signs, and he's cleaning his house first. There's too many other people reverence the Lord with their mouth, but their ways are far from him. This is why we have to have a conversation. We have to, I'm, I'm, I'm letting you know he's real. The Holy Spirit is real. Prophetic prophecies are real. It's not just in a book, we're witnesses. Not your whole witnesses, but real witnesses. We're witnesses. I get a little passionate about this stuff sometimes, you know. We want to read, I'm going to have Sister Micaiah read Sirach chapter 34, verses 1. Yeah. We're going to go 1 through 7. Mm -hmm. This scripture right here um, is basically breaking down the the difference between well it's, it's actually going into between dreams dreams right why you shouldn't put too much into dreams unless because we're touching on dreams and visions unless right you're walking you're less unless you're not walking with what a double heart and a double mind because when you're working with walking with the most high he gives you bring dreams and visions remember in the last days he said he's gonna pour it out on his children but there's many people opening their mouths and saying things but yet they're doing the opposite so who are these dreams truly coming from because remember Remember in the book of Enoch, the Lord did what? He told the giants to end their demise also. Likewise, he said in the last days, he's going to do also with the sinners. So you got to really judge what are you getting. Mm -hmm. Is it prophetic or is it judgment on you? Sister Micaiah, go ahead and read um, Sirach chapter 34, please, for me. And we're going to go 34, 1 through 7. The hopes of a man void of understanding are vain and false. So if you have no understanding, if you have no scripture, uh, faith comes by hearing, hearing come by what? The word. How do you get wisdom? 
You gotta have the word. You're vain of understanding if you don't have this book. Go ahead. And dreams lift up fools. Because they take all their thoughts and might into what they had a vision or dream about, and the dream is vain. It's nothing. It's just something that's a puff of smoke. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. Whoso regards dreams is like him that catches at a shadow and follows after the wind. The vision of dreams is the resemblance of one thing to another, even as the likeness of a face to a face. Think about it. A lot of times you'll go through something in life or you'll be going through a situation or you'll be in a certain place and your subconscious is taking it in. Yeah. And next thing you know, you're dreaming about it. Yeah. That's why he says it's likely to a face or something you see because it's really something you've been and it's just subconscious is bringing it back out. Or something you could have watched on TV. Television, any of that. You. So that's yeah. why he said don't put your hope and faith in these things unless you are spiritual. Let's keep reading. Go ahead. Verse 4. Of an unclean thing, what can be cleansed? And from that thing which is false, what truth can come? Mm. Divinations and soothsayings and dreams are vain, and vain. the heart fancies as a woman's heart in travail. If they be not sent from, mm -hmm. from if they be not what? If they be not sent from Yahuwah in your visitation. In your what? Visitation. Now how you visit it? That's when the most high brings it to you. But how? Through the Holy Spirit. And who gets that? The ones who are born what and what? A born again in the spirit. You gotta be born again in the spirit. Go ahead. Um, it says, set not your heart upon them. For dreams have deceived many, and they have failed that put their trust in them. Now, a lot of people put their trust in dreams. That's why he said don't set on soothsayers. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have the dream books. They go yeah. in and do all of this stuff. The Lord doesn't like those things. You understand? His children, remember, we all are his firstborn, Israel being us. But his, we're all written in the book of life. What we do gets us erased out. That's right. So we got to remember one thing. One thing. If you're not reborn in the spirit, if you're not walking with the Lord, you got a devil tongue and a devil mouth. And a devil mind, I want to say. Forget about it. You must forget about it. The visitation you get, you got to understand who it really comes from. Because Satan will give them to you too. Just to keep you deceived and in sin. Just to keep you. So, one thing I want to go through real quick. I want to go through a little deeper level of understanding of how the Most High sends his children dreams and visions and prophetic events to let you know what's coming. Now, when I had that vision about Bahamas, I think it was the first day that the storm hit when I had that vision. But when I had that vision, he explained to me why. He said, because his children will repent. I had people say, well, that's a heart machine. There's no heart, nothing. Mother nature, there's no mother in this nature here. It's father. Those storms came from West Africa, where we were taken from. And migrated all the way to where his children were taking. And they also have all these tours. Not only just these tours, these sex things they're doing, and none of them reps in the Lord. I'm sure there's good people that love the Lord and know him. But there's many more that don't. So what did he do? What he said he would do. He gonna start with his house, just like he did a long time ago. Remember, we were the 400 years as of last month, so to speak. I'll just say at the end of this year, but we over that 400 year marker. When that storm came, it came and sat. Not for four hours, not for six hours, but for how long? Like a day and a half, two days. It was two days, <laughs> 48 hours. He's cleaning his house. In order to clean a house, what do you have to do? You have to sweep it clean. And that place has been swept. Why? If you look at the videos, how many people are praying to the Most High? They call him Jesus, but he, you know, he knows who they're talking to. But think about this. They're calling on his name in the last hour. In Jamaica, they came to him first and prayed. I listen to reggae music. Jamaican people are the most spiritual yeah, people so on this spiritual. earth. They know who we are. They always talk about Jah, the Israel. They know who we are. Those people got together and prayed and that storm passed by. Likewise, we have to put our hope in him and not in man. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. We represent with our mouth, but our ways are so far from him. That's why that storm sat on the Bahamas for two days. The Lord showed me all these things. 
I don't care what men say. I know what I know. I'm going to give you a vision he gave me. I'm going to give you a couple of them. The one vision I was there, when I say a vision and a dream, we just read about dreams. A vision is similar to a dream, but the difference is you're awake, but that you're, you, you think you sleep, but you're not. It's like he takes you away. Mm-hmm. And I remember one day I was sitting, and as I was sitting, I saw my, my rawak, what I call my spirit, was lifted up, and he took me. It's like an angel took me to a desert. When I look at the desert, I'm like, where am I? Because it looked nothing like America. Then I realized it was like in, it was like in Israel. The difference is, it was like it is today. It wasn't fertile like it was when we was there. It looks like it is today. And as I was sitting there, all of a sudden I seen hands come before me. And these hands started forming something. I didn't know what was going on. And all of a sudden, there was a cinder block. I'm like, what is this? But then all of a sudden I seen another invisible hand. Then I saw, I saw mortar being put on it and leveled out. And then another block stacked on it. I'm like, what is this? Whoa, that was like I was right there. But all of a sudden when the wall got so high, it started to lean and bam, a plumb line came down and it kept it erect. The wall stood straight. I said, Father, what is this? He said, son, that's what he calls me, his son. He said, son, he said, the bricks that you saw are my words. I'm like, wow. He said, the mortar that you saw, that's the Holy Spirit, that Yeshua, my son, left, that holds those words together. He said that when you start to fall or when you start to sway away, he says, I come in and I'm the plumb line to keep you erect. Mm. I'm getting chills talking about it. I was like, wow. He said, follow my ways and follow my son and you'll inherit the kingdom. You are my son. He said, follow my son. He said, his children know his voice yes. in the wilderness. And we was watching a video yes. with um, Josh, Josh, I think. from Rebirth. Rebirth and, and I was watching another young man from 2017 had the same exact video. And they were showing how when a sheep herder, you can have many people out there and everybody can call the sheep. They gonna just keep eating grass, they keep their head down. They gonna keep eating nothing. But when that master comes, that's right. Such as Yeshua comes, that's right. All their heads lift up instantly. Yes. What did he say? His children know his voice in the wilderness. They know his voice. You see, I've been hearing his voice since I was a baby. But now I have an understanding. You have to, when you hear his voice, you gotta listen. That first voice is his, the second voice is yours. You see, this is the problem. We wanna serve the flesh. That's it. And we're gonna get into the scriptures to prove it. Another one I wanna give you. Another vision. This vision here kinda, of, man, it shook me a little bit. It's like I was right there, right there, right there. The Lord took me, and it's all, he took my rowak. He always takes my spirit, and he lifts me up. And I saw this man in the lake. Now, I saw this man, I could see his upper torso. He was real handsome, super handsome. And not only handsome, he was kind of muscular. He was a dark man, but he had a nice grade of hair, and he was just real, you know, he was real handsome. And he was just swimming in the water, but he was swimming, he was kind of turning himself. And I'm like, wow, who is this man? And as I said that, my rock raised up. And I was up about 30 feet above him so I can look straight down. Then all of a sudden, I saw sharks swimming around him counterclockwise. Swimming around him, swimming around him, swimming around. And then his face changed. I'm like, whoa, why did his face change? And the shark kept swimming faster. They saw swimming faster, but they never touched him. They didn't touch him. And then all of a sudden, another face came. And when they did, the shark swam even faster. But then I saw a face change a third time. And then when it changed the third time, all of a sudden his body started bobbing. He started bobbing. But he never went under the water, but his body kept, and all of a sudden that blood 
started pouring out in the lake. Then all of a sudden, I seen a fourth face, face show up on him. And then when the fourth face showed up, I'm like, wow, what is this? And, he, and the sharks were still spinning. They were spinning. And then all of a sudden, when I said that, it turned into an ocean. It wasn't a lake no more. I saw an ocean of blood. And I'm like, what is this? Father, what is this? And then the next thing I know, when I saw that, all of a sudden dolphins came instead of sharks and they started swimming counterclockwise. Clockwise. Excuse me, clockwise. Mm -hmm. Instead of counterclockwise. And when they were doing these things, I'm like, I couldn't understand what was all of a sudden the blood started clearing up. It started clearing up. And they swam faster and faster clockwise. And all of a sudden that man, the last face that changed, it had a bright light on it. I couldn't look him in the face like the others. I couldn't look him in the face. I couldn't look him in the face, but I remember it was hot. I felt the heat. I just remember that. And I remember I was looking at the island. It was like a, a land. But on the land, there was regular trees. There was birds. There was doves. And there was all types of animals there. But all of a sudden, you just like if you're on a sand dune. You know, and you're in the middle of the ocean, but you walk on shallow water. All of a sudden, when the water cleared up completely, that man started walking out the water, but I couldn't look at his face with the shine bright. I couldn't see his face. And as he started walking, all of a sudden, everything before him, the trees that were brown turned bright green in colors I'd never seen. Then I seen trees I never saw before. And then I could smell fruit from trees that are so far back, but it was like it was right in my nose. And then I saw animals that I never saw before. And the thing that amazed me is that he was communicating with them. They understood him and he understood them. Mm. I was like, wow. I was like, Father, what is this? And then the land. It's like everything that was brown and was right, it all healed. And then all of a sudden the animals were communicating back and forth. And everything was perfect harmony. And then I could see the sky. And all of a sudden the light from the sky, from the sun changed. When he hit, as soon as his toe hit the ground, it changed. It went from a regular, like we see in the day, to a bright light. But not bright light that blinds you, but a beautiful light. I say, Father, what is this? And he always gives me answers. He said, that man that you see in the lake, that was spinning, counterclockwise, that was Abraham. He said, the sharks that you saw around him were the other nations that wanted his property, his land, but they couldn't do anything with him. He said, the second person that you saw was Isaac. He said all these other nations wanted him, but they couldn't touch him. He said, but then you saw his face change again. He said, that was Jacob. Hmm. He said, that was Jacob when all the nations started to hunt his children and to go after them. Remember, he said, son, there was as numerous as the sands of the sea. That's why the blood in the lake became as much as an ocean, the hmm. symbolic of his children. He said, I said, well, Father, what was the other face I saw before? He said, that face you saw was David. When the purple, he said, when you saw the porpoises come and the, and the water start clearing up, he said, that was my son, David. Because through David, the last face you saw had to come, which was my son, the Messiah. He said, the brightness that you saw, he said, that was the Holy Spirit on him. That was the brightness of his essence. That was pure light that you saw on mm -hmm. him. It was kind of blowing me away. And I, and, I, and, I, and I was asked so many questions, I was scared to ask them another. I said, Father, well, what was that? I, it was heat, but the heat went away. And then the light got brighter. He said, son. He said, that wasn't, he said, the light. He said, the first heat that you felt was from the sun. But when my son comes, he says that there won't be a sun. He says, I'll light the earth. I'll give it light. And the brightness that you see is from me. I was like, what are the smells in the earth? He said, because he's going to renew the earth, the plants, the animals. And he says, everything that you think you know, you don't know. But I'm showing you so you do know. He says, all these things are going to come to fruition. And I woke up. Mm -hmm. I woke up. It was deep. I had another one. I'm going to give you another one I had. I was asleep. 
but not asleep and I pray this night, Lord, show me visions, show me what's to come. I always do that to show me something that I need to know and tell my people. And all of a sudden that night, my Roach again was raised up. And it went to a place, I don't know, I remember looking to the right. When I looked to the right, I saw a middle school. And I know because it was a middle school, it said it. That's what I thought, I saw kids there. But all of a sudden, I looked up in the heavens and I saw this ominous cloud. But it wasn't a scary cloud like when I had the Bahamas dream. It wasn't like it was terrified we couldn't run nowhere, go nowhere like in the Bahamas dream. This one was actually, I said in my mind, that's a ship. That's not, that's a ship. That's one of the most highest chariots. This is exactly what I said in the vision. And as soon as I said that, my body changed. In an instant, I started flying. And I'm not only flying, I could control it. But the only problem was, I could only go so high. And I was upset because all of a sudden, when I looked to the left, bam, I saw a street that looked like it was about 50 miles wide. That's what it looked like. And in the street, it looked like the streets of San Francisco where they have the trolley cars going down. But across, all the way across was children. Now what amazed me is behind those children was a numerous amount of children that you couldn't even count. And I'm like, and as I'm flying, three little kids, there were three, I remember it was three of them tried to chase me, three kids, I remember, just like it was yesterday. And I remember one little girl she was like, I want to fly. She was like three years old. She said, I want to fly too, like you. They was trying to get my legs, so I'm trying to jump up so they can't grab my legs. And so all of a sudden, when she said that, her little body changed and she started to fly, but she couldn't control it and she was scared. So I swooped down and I grabbed her. And I said, Father, what is this? What is going on, Father? Please tell me. Who are these children? He said, Son, these are not children. He said, The people that you see, he said, these are all the souls that become like children mm. in order to receive the word. You're seeing their spirit. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, those are the ones who wash their garments, who have garments been washed white, and they follow the lamb. They hear his voice in the wilderness. These are the ones who've been changed. He said, what you're seeing is their spirit because they become childlike in order to receive mm. the word. I said, oh, praise. And as I said that, and he told me that, all of a sudden, everybody started changing. They started changing. Everybody started changing to a glorious light. Everybody started flying. Everybody. Mm. And the little girl whom I had, she changed. I let her go. No longer was she doing this, she was flying straight. So, I just want to share a couple visions with you that I've been getting from the Most High. And he gave me, and listen, my wife's a witness. I would have to write a, a, a <laughs> book this thick to give you all the visions that he gives me and the testimonies and also the things he's shown me that come true. How many times I've told you something that come to true? Every time. How many times? Every time. How many times I piss you off? <laughs> I said, Michelle, I know that's your friend, but the Lord is telling me that she takes from Paul and she steals from Peter. She takes from both of them. No, she don't. I grew up her since she was six years old. I was six years old. You don't know her. You don't. Okay, I do the penguin. This is what I always do. Okay. And I walk away. What'd you come back and tell me? Yeah. What he said came to fruition. That's just one situation yeah. of many. It was confirmed. Michelle. Most I always I know it's your cousin. But you know, you know he's bisexual. You know he's a little homo. I said, I know what I'm told. I don't care what he looked like. Come later on, what'd you say? So what I'm saying is this, I want everyone to understand that the Holy Spirit is real, the road walk that Christ left. Remember, he said, I'm going to leave you he something. Said, Pour it out. He said, I'm going to circumcise your mind, I'm going to circumcise your heart, and I'm going to put these scriptures in you. So it's a confirmation of what you already know. We are the lost tribe. We are the ones. Deuteronomy 76, Amos 3 and 5, say of all the nations, he only gave it to us. Now, are we to follow Moses' laws and be like the Pharisees and have no love and everything we do? You ain't one of your fringes. Oh, that nigga head ball. His head covered when he praying. All these little things. Oh, wait a minute. He don't believe in a virgin birth. None of that stuff has to do with salvation. None of that stuff's getting you in the kingdom. Christ said you must 
love your brother as you love yourself. And we're going to get into these scriptures next. I just want to give you some visions and some testimonies so you know this is real. Because too many of our people are hearers of the word, but they're not doers of the word. They're playing with the Lord. That's why he said many are called, but trust me, because he takes me there. Only a few are going to be chosen. Another real wide gate. I have another vision I've seen that. He even took me, I remember a long time, he even showed me what heaven's gates look like. I remember I explained to my wife one day. Remember that long time ago, Chris? And he took it away. And then he took it away. I never understood why he took it away until I was reading Ezra. Ezra was like, well, why we got to go through this? Why we go through it? He said, Ezra, I like it into a kingdom with golden cities, golden streets, so you can see straight down in rubies and pearls. He said, but there's a narrow path to get there. One side is fire, which is what we walk through. Just like Abraham did, which we're going to go through a testimony there. And the other five sides is water. John the Baptist said, there's one that coming. He said, I couldn't let you shoot. I baptize you with water, but he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost of the Word. So we're going to go through these scriptures and we're going to get a real understanding of why we can't have a devil mind and a devil tongue. We have to have our whole heart with the Most High in order to That's receive right. this kingdom. You can't be partial in this walk. That's right. You can't, you can't be lukewarm. You got to be hot okay. or cold. We're going to go through a, 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 a reading right here real quick. We're going to go through Jasher. We're going to read the Testament of Abraham. Now, I wanna, there's a point I'm going to make with this story. We're going to read Jasher 12, 21 through 38. Jasher 12, 21 through 38. I'm going to have Sister Micaiah read this. And I, as we're doing this, just like then, it's the same as now. Abraham walked through the fire. We're walking through the fire. Mm -hmm. Abraham hands was bound with linen cords. When we have the mark of the beast on our forehead, 666, taking oaths or bought into this doctrine, or we have no love, we're still under Moses' laws. Or we're afraid. We're afraid. That's bondage. You understand? Yeah. And the key thing is my wife say fear. When you, when, when Abraham, let's read this account. Yeah. And then we go there. Go ahead. I'll let you go to read. Please. Verse 21. Uh, Joshua 12, verse 21. And they brought them both, Abram and Haran, his brother, to cast them into the fire. And all the inhabitants of the land and the king. Now, started. let me give you a precept to this. Haran, who is Abraham's older brother, there was a prophecy that was told that actually the wise men, they saw a star come across and it sucked up with four of the stars. And when when Nimrod's wise men, so-called wise men saw this, the soothsayers saw this, they told him there was a child born to Terah, who was Abraham's father, and that that child would come and kill him and take away his seed. So Abraham, so Nimrod had Terah bring him that child, so he thought. But what Terah did was gave him one of his servant's children. And what Nimrod did was, bam, he bust his head open right there on the spot. So he thought he killed him. But later on, when Abraham realized that the gods that his father was creating, you understand, when he broke them all up and he put a hammer in another one's hands, when he put it in his hammer in his hands, Terah said, who broke these statues? Who broke them? Abraham said, he did. Terah said, he can't walk, he can't talk, he can't eat. Abraham said, exactly, then why are you worshiping him then? Likewise. So when Haran, when Terah, when, when, when Terah, end up going before the king because Terah was pissed off that Abraham had broken up all the statues so he went to Nimrod and told him. Now he didn't realize what he had done because he was just upset so he ran and told him but when he did that guess what? Those same wise men say listen king Nimrod that child that he's telling you about that broke those statues was the same one 50 years ago 50 years ago that he was supposed to kill. He didn't kill him. Terah looked stupid now. Mm -hmm. Like, whoa, wait a minute, man. I've been thinking now. I don't got myself caught up. So Nimrod asked him, is this true? Who, who advised you of this? Who told you to do this? Tara was so afraid. Can you remember Nimrod? Remember, he was huge. I think he was like a Nephilim. He was a big man. He was a huge man. Because when you, uh, I remember when they went to Iraq and pulled his body out, they were saying how big it was. So he was afraid of this man. So what did he do? And you know, I'm not going to lie. I've probably been you know, having a little bowel moving on myself too. Mm -hmm. And so, but what he did was, I would have probably told him it was one of my one of my top servants. Terah told him it was Haran. 
Haram was his oldest son, who was at that time 81 years old. And at the time, um, Abraham was only 50 years old. So Nimrod said, bring them both to me. So when they both came, Nimrod asked Abraham a question. Did you do this? And he told him, he said, who did that? Who, who? And Nimrod asked him, who broke those statues? Abraham said, the statue did, the one that with the hammer. And Nimrod said, how can he do that? He can't walk, he can't talk, he can't, he can't do nothing. And, and Abraham said, exactly, you foolish king. Then why would you worship him then? And of course, boldly. boldly he said, <laughs> with no fear, no hesitation. Speak loud, spare Thank not. God. And when he did those things, Nimrod's spirit was kindled. And that's when he called his princes and kings in. And this is where we get to this part. Go ahead. All right. Verse 21, um, I'm on the latter part. Mm -hmm. And all the inhabitants of the land and the king's servants and princes and all the women and little ones were there standing that now, day this. over them. Remember this. This was 900,000. Go ahead, read. And the king's servants took Abram and his brother and they stripped them of all their clothes, excepting their lower garments, which were upon them. They just had to draw them. Go ahead. And they bound their hands and feet with linen cords. With what? Linen cords. Go ahead. And the servants of the king lifted them up and cast them both into the furnace. Mm. And Yahuwah loved Abram and he had compassion now, over him. Now, one thing I didn't tell you, before they went into the furnace, this is what Haran said. If it be well with the king, I'm going to side with him. But if it be well with Abraham, I'm going to side with him. Devil mind. That, what is that? That's a devil mind and a devil tongue. Just like the serpent, serpent the snake. So the most, his heart was not all the way with who? The most high, such as Abraham. Go ahead and read. And Yahuwah came down and delivered Abraham. Who came down? Yahuwah. Who came down? Yahuwah. The most high came down and delivered Abraham. Go ahead from the fire and he was not burned. What? But all the cords with which they bound him were burned while Abram remained and walked about in the fire. And Haran died when they had cast him into the fire and he was burned to ashes. Mm. For his heart was not perfect with Yahuwah. His what? His heart was not perfect with Yahuwah. Let me ask you a question. Is your heart perfect with Yahuwah? Because I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna say this. You're walking around right now with those linen bands in this earth. When you got fear, envy, lust, deceit, you calling Esau the white man, crackers and names. You talking about y'all gonna die, y'all going to hell. You're not listening to Christ. You listen to yourself. Whose spirit you got on you? When you walk around this earth, you walk around just like this here. Right now. And because this is a fire, just like Abraham was in. This is a fire. But you're walking around bound. When you follow his law, judgment, statutes, commandments, when you follow the commandments that Christ brought, the new covenant, because like he said, I didn't come to do away with the laws, not one dot, not one tittle. I can fulfill them. Because the Bible always talked about him coming. And he came to fulfill what was talked about. You don't have those bands on you. You don't have the mark of the beast on you. You're free. If Abraham walked around in that fire and if he was worried, what do you think would have happened to him? He would have burned in the ashes instantly. Like but all those worldly things that were put on him, which is symbolic of those bands, which is the world, anything that had to do with the world was burnt away. And he walked freely with no fear. He was set free in that fire. Like you can be set free in this fire when you don't have a double mind and a double tongue. And you follow Yeshua and you're not following Moses' laws and sitting there being, have no love for a person because they're not wearing fringes. No love for a person because they don't believe in the virgin birth. No love in a person because they, 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 their religion is different from yours. Well, maybe if you are talk to them or show them, maybe right. you'll learn. Go ahead, so some Carolyn, what now? Yeah, are they in a different camp from you? Come on, you know, man. Nonsense. Oh, man. And that camp, and, and that's another thing. A lot of people are so petty when, you know, they don't understand that we all make up the body. You know, I'm a piece, you're a piece. Like, I know my gift is to warn our people of what's coming, where we're going somewhere. He showed me things. I know my gift teach. is to teach. Because he chose me. I, how many times I've talked to a person and I don't know these people that's black, white, Hispanic, no matter what they are. And the Lord has shown me everything going on in their life, even their past. And it comes right out of my mouth. I don't even rehearse it. It just comes out. And they sit there. What do they do, Michelle? A lot of times they cry. 
Grown right. men, women. They cry. They cry. It's not for me. I'm just a vessel. Moses took credit for smiting the rock. You can get in the land. Look, I don't take no credit. I know everything comes from the Holy Spirit that will walk. That Christ left us. We have to follow Yeshua. He's the way. He's the light. When we follow our own mind, our own heart, we fall in darkness. Straight darkness. A lot of people are double-minded just like Iran. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing about these people, you understand, Noah said people won't repent. They wouldn't repent. So the earth was shooken up. They still didn't repent. So the floods came. Revelation tells you this. In the last days, man, because of their pride. Mm -hmm. Because of their pride. Lust, envy, deceit, all of that fleshly stuff. The Lord said they won't repent of their sins and they're going to perish. What is what is said? 1 John 3 and 4. For sin is transgression of the law. The Lord said, how did he show me love? 1 John 5 and 3. He said, you show me love by following my laws. We're not under Moses' law, but under Christ. You still got laws. They were modified, for instance, under Christ. Yeshua said, if, a, if, a, if a, you say, you say give a woman a certificate of divorce. I say, unless there's adultery, you don't do that. He said, under Moses' law, if a man cheat on his wife, he said, if a man, if a man messed with another woman, that was adultery. He said, I say, if you think it, you've already committed it. We know anything to do with sacrifice, done away because he's a sacrifice. We also get repentance. Under Christ, you get repentance, you get grace, and you get salvation. You got none of that under Moses. And when you follow Moses' laws, you're Pharisees. You just like them. I want to read 1 John. Sister Micaiah is going to read 1 John 3. 5 through 10. 1 John 3, 5 through 10. I want to read this for you. All right. And I'll, I'll, before I read that, yeah. I just want to touch on the mindset mm -hmm. of a lot of our people who are supposed to be awake in this walk. Supposedly. You know, they still have Blinders on. a lot of that Christian mindset where they think, okay, I can commit sin because I'm not perfect. And I can just keep repenting. And it just does not work that way. So now we're going into now, the scriptures to show you. that, I want you to look up two scriptures. Uh -huh. And they're the same one. Not yourself. I want them to do this homework. I want you to look up Matthew 6.6 6 and Matthew 10.26, is it? Hebrews, okay. Hebrews uh, 2. We're actually going to read that. We're going to read that. Okay, Hebrews 10.26. Okay, good. So we're going to go through this. Go ahead and read this for me, please. So 1 John 3, uh, verse 5. It says... And I ye, apologize, it was Hebrews 6, 6 and Hebrews 10, 26. It just hit me, go ahead. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abides in him sins not. So if you're supposed to be following Yeshua, you're not going to be sinning. Keep reading. Whosoever sins has not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that commits sin is of the devil. Of who? Of the devil. Go ahead. For the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of Elohim was manifested, that he might destroy the works what, of what the purpose, devil. What purpose was he manifested? So that he might destroy the works of the devil. Go ahead. Whosoever is born of Yahuwah does not commit sin, for now, his seed remains in him. Now, did you get that last part? His seed remains in him. What is that seed? What is the seed that are planted today? The that's word. Mechanic. That's that word. The word. It's planted in him. If you follow Yeshua, I mean, you should be embarrassed at your old ways. If you if you reborn in the spirit, you'll be embarrassed at the way you used to be. Go ahead and keep reading, Sister Micaiah. And he cannot sin because he is born of Yahuwah. There you go. In this, the children of Yahuwah are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever does not righteousness, is not of Yahuwah, neither he that loves not his brother. Okay, now, that is a lot said there. Yes, it is. So, if you're sitting here, and you're telling me that, you know, we all sin, we do it. Okay, we all sin, known and unknown, and that is true. 
But if you know your sin and you go back to sin, as Hebrew 10, 26, it's sacrifice no good for you no more. This go is ahead. the thing. Mm -hmm. we, we do sin knowingly and unknowingly. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. let's just think about this. No, Nobody is perfect. We all fall nobody. short. Right. But certain sins have been judged. judged yeah. And so we have people that are actually practicing these sins that have been judged. Yeah. You can help it. Okay. Well, you, <laughs> you just don't want to. Exactly. Because of the lust of the flesh. <laughs> exactly. That's the only reason. Because you have to per you have to practice to be what? Perfect. That's right. It don't come overnight. Rome wasn't built in a day. Read You're not gonna word. be perfect, but if you keep reading the word and getting that armor on, instead of that plastic when you go out, when you keep that armor on you, you will not sin. You will try every listen, if when he says be ye perfect, this is what he really means. Because I know these spirits. When he says be ye perfect, he knows we're gonna mess up, we do things. But what he's saying is, it's like that old saying, if you reach up here, even if you fall short, you've accomplished a lot. Likewise, when he says be ye perfect, if you strive to be perfect and you make a few mistakes, your chance and your land of being filled is a greater than it being empty. Because when you sitting there saying, I can't be perfect, we all saying, the Lord know my heart. And you're not even trying. You're not even trying. Or you got a devil tongue. And one That's minute right. you're saying it, you go to Shabbat classes, you do a lesson, you look good in front of people. But yeah. when the door closes, That's right. you go back to being the same dead soul. We're going to read 2nd Baruch. I'm going to give a couple more scripts on sin. 2nd Baruch, 48 and 40, please. Sister Micaiah, 2nd Baruch 48 and 40. We want to read a little more scriptures on sin. Because what people don't understand and what they truly don't get is that the Lord doesn't like hearers of the word. He likes doers of the word. That's right. You understand? But you can't be a doer of the word unless you have faith. Now we know faith comes by hearing, hearing comes by the word. You got to read. How can you build your arm up if you're not reading? You only regurgitating the words that come out of somebody else's mouth. Or you listen to a YouTube video. But at the same time, a text message is coming in. And at the same time, you got this going. Or your child is over here. But you're not focused because you're not reading. You have to read to get wisdom. When you start reading, there's so many areas that you can go into with any human being. Any person on this earth. A king, a prince, a mathematician, a scientist. It doesn't matter. That wisdom will get you there rapidly. Did you find it yet, man? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and read, please. Second Baruch 40 and 40. Go ahead. It says, because each of the inhabitants of the earth knew when he was transgressing. Now, the Lord says, each inhabitant of the earth knew when he was transgressing. He says, not your job to teach every man. Why? He said, because he's going to put it on what? All four corners of the earth. He's put it out here. Everybody knows. That's why you get convicted when you're doing wrong. Conviction just means, especially with us, that stuff that Yeshua put in us, the word, the scriptures, and we know better. When we hear it, we get convicted. Go ahead. But my Torah, they knew not by reason of the, their pride. The, wait a minute, wait a minute. What did they knew not? Their Torah, his Torah. So Torah, the first five books of the law. We're not under Moses' law, but under Christ, those laws still exist. That's why he said, I didn't come to do it with the law from a dot one till. I came to fulfill them. Go ahead. Okay. Let's go to second Baruch. I mean, we're going to go to another. We'll go to 2nd Baruch 19, um, 1 through 3. 2nd Baruch chapter 19, 1 and 3. Because we have to understand something. Heaven and earth never goes anywhere. They're always here above us. But they testify against us. Go ahead and read, please. And he answered and said unto me, Wherefore at that time he appointed for them a covenant and said, Behold, I have placed before you life and death. And he called what heaven did he give and them earth. Before? What did he put before them? Life and death. No, before that. Read the first part, please. Restart. Wherefore, okay. Mm -hmm. And he answered and said unto him, Wherefore at that time he appointed for them a covenant. A what? A covenant. Uh-huh. And now we know Yeshua came to start what? A new covenant. And he doesn't, it's not fulfilled till he comes back. Go ahead and read. And said, Behold, I have placed before you life and death. So under that covenant is life and death. So what is what is sin? What gives you death? First John 3 and 4, sin. Mm -hmm. So that means you're going right back to the laws again. Go ahead. And he called heaven and earth to witness against them. Hmm. 
for he knew that his time was but short, but that heaven and earth endure always. Endures how long? Always. Always. So, but after, mm -hmm. go ahead. But after his death, they sinned and transgressed, though they knew that they had the Torah of approving them. See, people know they got the laws, but everybody's saying they done away with, or they don't mean nothing. Everybody's saying, well, that was back then, you know, we're not under the law. You know, because I can eat pig, I can eat all of this stuff, but they don't read scriptures. Go ahead. In the light in which nothing could err, also the spheres which testify and me. Mm, mm, mm. So you have heaven and earth testifying, and you say the spheres, the sun, the moon, everything's mm -hmm. testifying against mm -hmm. what we do. And you really and read the scriptures, you learn there's seven eyes, sets of eyes that come and go from earth that reports back to the Most High. You understand? And these are the seven angels. Hmm. A lot of people make a mistake of casting the Torah away, you know? Um, let's read Baruch 4, um, 1 and 3. Let's go to first, first Baruch, yes. Mm -hmm. It says Baruch. Okay. Yeah, I believe it's first Baruch, right. Four, one, and three should be. Yes, dear. This is the cipher of the commandments of Elohim and the Torah that endures forever. All they that guard it shall come to life. Wait a minute. So all those who guard the Torah, which are the first five books, which people say are done away, they come to what? Life. So that means that goes back to Ezekiel, the, 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 the valley of dry bones. Mm -hmm. That's that, that's what we're going back. So all those who follow the Torah, bone will be put to bone. Flesh will be put to flesh. You understand the four winds will come into them. They're going to come back to life. Read. It says, but such as leave it shall die. So all those people who say the laws are done away with mm -hmm. because they have no understanding. Christ came and modified laws. The laws of sacrifice or anything that pertains to sacrifice is gone. You understand? Anything that pertains to immediate death is gone because you get repentance. You understand? Now, there's certain things, like my wife said, you already judged them. You're breaking the royal laws, you already, hey, look, <laughs> you already judged. It is what it is. The New Testament covers that. And it covers um, that, you know? And one of the one of the most important things, too, under Yeshua's law, you have to be converted. You have to be by water and what? Spirit. And spirit. You have to be converted. We can't give this to you. Only thing we are vessels is to plant a seed, but you got to be converted. You got to be baptized in water, and you got to be converted in the spirit. Do you understand me? If it was good enough for Yeshua, it's good enough for me. That's right. Now, we know that under Moses' law, you were judged by two or three witnesses, and it was immediate death. But under Christ, you get grace, repentance, and you get another thing: salvation. That's what people don't understand: the differences between Christ's covenant and Moses' laws. That's why he let you know, the law's still here. I ain't come to do away with them. I'm gonna modify some. Well, under me, you get another chance to get it right. That's right. But don't keep going back to sin. Because as Hebrews 10, 26 tell you, my sacrifice is no longer good for you once you go back to perdition, which is sin. Now, now if you wanna read the difference between uh, the laws are clearly stated, if you go to the gospels, from, um, if you go to the Gospels, Matthew chapter 5 through 7, um, and then also you got Mark, Luke, John, and Acts, and it's also Romans chapter 8 also. So if you go through this, you can get a, 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 a real understanding where there's no confusion what's wrong in the eyes of the Most High. When you go through these books, and I'm going to say them again, if you go through, um, let me see, Matthew chapter 5 through 7, it's the gospel of, that's on the mount, right? Gospel. Uh, sermon, sermon on the, on the mount. mount. That's a mm -hmm. sermon on the mount, five through seven, if I'm not mistaken. And then if you go through Mark, Luke, John, and Acts, and also Romans chapter eight, I want you to read this. It's going to give you a clear understanding of the difference. Okay? Paul's um, epistle takes it a little step further, outlining what sins have already been judged. So when you go through that, you'll see that he goes through a little bit deeper and lets you know exactly what's been judged. Mm -hmm. Now you can also, um, let's read Isaiah 24 and 5. Okay, do you want to read Matthew first, 5? Mm, yeah, let's go ahead and read my, Matthew 5. We'll go Matthew 5. Okay, so this seven. is where Christ is confirming he didn't come to do away with the Torah. 
It says, think not that I am come to destroy the Torah or the prophets. That's Matthew 5, 17 there. Uh-huh. Okay, go ahead. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. To do what? To fulfill. Go ahead. For amen, I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one yod or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the Torah till all be fulfilled. Till what be fulfilled? Till all be so fulfilled. So Christ is telling you that the law still exists and not one, well not one what will pass? <laughs> he said not one of them will pass except the ones we spoke about until all is fulfilled. This is coming from Yeshua, mm -hmm. not me. Mm -hmm. This come from him. But yet, we don't want to be doers of the word. We just want to hear the word. We want somebody to feed it to us. Mm. Where are we at? We're going to read Isaiah 24 and 5. We're going to read Isaiah 24. Um, Excuse me. And I'm going I'm to show you why this whole earth right now is defiled. It says, the earth also is defiled under the, the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the Torah. So, the earth is defiled because no one's following the laws. Go ahead. Changed the ordinance and broken the everlasting covenant. Look, they've changed everything. Everything Satan does today, especially when he took us into captivity, Israel, our people. When we used to walk right side up, Satan taught us to walk what? Upside, upside down. down. You understand? So it's up to us to get those bone to bone, flesh to flesh, and the four winds to come back in. But you gotta, you gotta feel this and know this is real. Listen, we witnesses, we don't see how the most high work firsthand. I've been seeing it all my life. I used to try to go to my wife with it, but she wasn't ready. The Lord told me she's not ready. And then when she was ready, he came in. Now that diamond that I had that was in the rough. He's chiseled all the way around it now. And now I got a beautiful diamond here. Mm -hmm. I have a spiritual woman that I love so much. Mm -hmm. You understand? But it wasn't nothing I did. Because remember, when I gave you my, when I told you, I said, bring me your wife. He said, you can't fix her. I got to fix her. See, that's the problem with our people. We think we can fix everybody. You can't fix nobody. Hmm? You can't fix. Then Elijah sent his servant and told his servant to go heal that child. And the servant had envy inside his heart for Elijah. What happened to him? That child didn't even move. He couldn't do nothing. Because it's not the man that does anything. It's the most high. He knows our hearts. Where we at? 2nd Ezra 7. We're going to read 2nd Ezra 7, uh, 20 through 25. 2nd Ezra 7, 20 through 25. Go ahead. For there be many that perish in this life. Because they despise the Torah of Elohim. They despise what? The Torah they of despise Elohim. Despise the laws. Go ahead. That is set before them. It's put before you. Go ahead. For Elohim has given straight commandments. He gave straight what? Came. He gave straight commandments. Yes. Go ahead. What they should do to live, even as they came, and what they should observe to avoid punishment. Nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him, but spoke against him and imagined vain things. Now, does that sound familiar? Yeah. Does that sound familiar today? Go ahead. Verse 23. And deceived themselves by their wicked deeds and said of El Elyon that he is not and knew not his ways. They don't know. Listen, there's so many people talking about, I know the Lord. I know the Lord. <laughs> I know. He don't know you. Mm -hmm. He don't know you, period. That's why when Christ talked about the 10 versions, you understand? You gotta remember, you got 10 people together every day, just like the wheat and the tear coming up. But when the bridegrooms come back, what happened? Five of them leaving to go get their lamps full. And when the one come back, what does he say to her? Get away from me, because I never, he said, I don't say I don't know you. He said, I never knew you. Yeah. A lot of y'all think you know the most high, you don't know him, period. You don't know my father. Our Father who art in heaven, you don't know him, but you need to get to know him because this this window is closing real fast, real fast. Go ahead, Sister McKay. Verse 24, but his Torah have they despised and denied his covenants, and his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. And therefore, Ezra, for the empty are empty things, and for the full are the full things. So what you put in is what you get out. If you're not studying this word, if you're not studying to show yourself to be what? Approved. 
How do you think the Most High is giving you visions and dreams? Huh? And you out there committing sin and adultery and doing everything under the Lord's Son. Looking at pornography. All this stuff that, that, that destroys the soul. Remember the Lord says eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. He sees everything we do. He knows you got a devil mind and a devil tongue. Where we at, Sister McKay? Um, Matthew 5, 4, Okay, now we're going to go to, we're going to go to the book of Matthew. We're going to go to uh, chapter 5, 43 through 48. We're going to read the book of Matthew, chapter 5, 43 through 48. Go ahead, Sister McKay, please. Ye have heard that it has been said, you shall love your neighbor and mm. hate your enemy. Mm. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Now, how many of these brothers of these camps sitting here cussing people out? Calling them names. Dude, I don't remember reading none of that with you, sure. Mm -hmm. I know he told the lady I'll cast my pearls to dogs. He said, I came for the house of Israel. It says Matthew 15. But other than that. But he even helped her though when yeah, she showed her but faith. But because why? Because he had love. She showed her faith too. And she showed her faith. And yeah. that's what's important. What my wife just said. She showed her unwavering faith. She said, sire. He said, you don't cast your, your, your pearls to dogs, but she even dogs take crumbs from the master's table. That's right. He said, man, he said, man, wow, he marveled at her wisdom. You understand? And so therefore he granted her her wish. Go ahead. And just to touch on faith, um, and I meant to bring this out earlier when you was talking about Abraham. Mm -hmm. You know, Job was in a similar situation but mm -hmm. his fire was different his he lost everything everything but still would not turn on never. the most high you never know never turned on it and a lot of times when our people are going through things they turn and the most high yeah. not giving an, yeah. an immediate answer and say that a what answer an immediate is this time like our time not at all See, they don't understand a day is a thousand years a thousand years a day to the lord and then sometimes this time is not your time he want to see the fruit that comes from you Ezra asked a question he said, Father, why did you make us perfect? Why we got to go through all of this? He said, Ezra, he said, I give my children the law to see the fruit that comes from them. He just want to see you going to listen to him. Yeah. Just like your parents did. When your parents say, I tell you what, I want you to clean that car, I want you to do that, and I want to do that. Now, when they come back, they're already thinking, I want to see if he did all of those things I asked him to do. Hmm? Symbolic of that man who had the one coin that was given to him. And the other one had two, the other one had three and four. And they turned those coins and they made more. But the one who had the one, he hid it and stored it away. So when the Lord came back, all he had to give him back was what he gave him. He had no place in the kingdom. Likewise with us. When the Lord gives us something, just like right now, he's telling me to feed my people. I want you to go to them and, t because I always keep the vision to myself. I really wasn't sharing it every blue moon, but I wasn't talking. But the Lord showed me something. One night when I was sitting there thinking, Father, why, why would I tell these people that? And, I, and all of a sudden the scripture came when Christ was asked the question, can you, can you show us a vision? Can you show us a sign? Right. <laughs> and Christ said, you adult your generation, you always want a sign. He said, your people want a sign. So I want you to go ahead and tell them the things I'm showing you and the things I've told you and the things I continue to show you. Feed my sheep. I want you to feed my sheep. That's why I'm doing this lesson. He said, I want you to feed my sheep. Not only mm. that, you know, Israel as a whole, the ones I talk to, everybody is dealing with some type of trial. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, it's easy yes. to walk with the most high and reverence him when nothing is going on. Boy, you don't have no challenges, but Soon when as. you go through things, that's when the real you comes out. And that's when the Lord sees who you truly yes. are. Yes. That's when he learns who his children are. We all going through the fire of Israel. Yes. Remember, we're at the end of the 40 days. It's sifting, boy. We had the end of four days. We been tested. I'm another day getting in the car. And this old man, I just see him down the road. He said he's from Nigeria or somewhere. I don't know where this old man is, but I'm a Lord's child. The old man, he said the cab driver just took $200 from him for like 20 minutes. And I was like, what do you mean? He told me this. I was at a shop. I said, sir. He said, do you know what Walgreens is? 
And I said, well, yeah, I know what one is, but you know, I, I'm a good friend to go. But the Holy Spirit say, take this old man where he need to go. I said, sir, don't worry about it. I'll take you where you need to go. And then I come back here. So, because too, he was a foreigner and he's my brother. He's from Nigeria. You can tell he's an Israelite. And so as he gets in the car, he starts talking about, he puts $50. I said, sir, will you give me $50 for Walgreens? He said, don't worry about it. I got plenty of money. And he pulled out a lot of money. And I saw he had like a bunch of hundreds, like this thing. So I'm like, okay, you got money. I'm not going to trip on you. You want to give me 50? That's a blessing from the Lord, hey? <laughs> so as we riding off to go, he said, I'll tell you what, I want you to take me over here to the store to quick trip. So I said, okay. When I said, okay, he took the 50 and put 100 there. I'm like, sir, you don't have to give me no money like that. I mean, sir, I'm like, I I'm your brother. You, we, I don't want your money. He goes, no, I want you to take it. I got money. And I learned a long time ago working apartments that older people, when they say something, if you don't take it, they get offended. So, and I need the gas money, so <laughs> no problem. But as we get to the store, I realize, you know, he says, I know who we are. He says, I said to him, you know we Jacob, you know we Israel. He says, I know. But he said it like with this humble word, like I know. And he looked at me because he kind of cross-eyed a little bit when he was looking at me, <laughs> when he was saying it. So we get to the store, he has this paperwork and he says, this Asian lady gave it to him. And he said he gave her $400 for helping him. I'm like, sir, why are you giving your money away? And he said, no, but she told me she can get me a place to stay for $600 a day. That's it. I say, $600 a day? I say, sir, I'm a realtor. And this is when it kind of hit me. This might be a test. I'm a realtor. Me and my wife do this for a living. This could be an angel or somebody messing with me, tempting me, trying to tempt me. Because in the spirit, I know how the most high work, but other people don't. I know when you can have angels right before you, you don't even know who they yeah. are. Because the Lord is always testing his children, their fortitude. So as he said that, another man comes over. And as he comes over, he asked this man, he said, sir, can you go ahead and tell me what this is? I said, sir, he don't know what that is. And I said, she's taking $600. He says, how much money you got in the bank? Another test. Now, you know we don't tell how much we got in the bank. But he asked me that question. He asked the other man. The old man told him. He said, I got $38,000 in my savings. And I got $30,000, same $4,000 he said I got in my regular account. He asked me, how much money you got? Well, I ain't got much he got to say. <laughs> and so, but I, I was stuttering because I, I, I didn't stutter. I, I didn't want to tell him what I had in my account, but I told him the truth because I felt like there was a test from the Lord. And as I said it, all of a sudden he pulled out three wads this big, three of them with nothing but hundreds. He said, I got 97,000 on me. I don't worry about it. I didn't, I didn't give money. I, my, I started looking around. I'm like, I'm going to bump in the head. But I realized something ain't right about this. Something ain't right. And as I said, he gets out the car and he takes a hundred. He just took it and he gets out. Immediately the Holy Spirit told me, if you love your brother, you won't ask for that hundred. I didn't ask for it. I just let him get out. And this other man who came to the car was talking to him. He said he helped him and he ended up leaving. But I'm telling you, that was a test. These are tests that we get all the time. A lot of people would have probably bumped the old man in the head, did some stupid stuff. Just drove him around, took his money. Or like we on a property, man, we'll get your place, you don't have to worry about nothing, and took his money. But when you're spiritual, you see everything in spiritual eyes, mm -hmm. not in earthly eyes. Most people would have failed that test. They would have been hollering about the money. Bruh, you need to get my money back. Or they would put it in their pocket immediately. I left it there for a reason. Because he truly wanted to give it to me, he wouldn't take it. And the Spirit had me leave it there, the trace that I put it in my pocket. And I'm glad I did that now. I just want to give you that testimony too. We're going to read Matthew 5, 43 through 48. Sister Micaiah? All right, so. Matthew says, 5, 43 through 48. I apologize. Go verse ahead. 43. Ye have heard that it has been said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Out of time. Go ahead. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, right. do, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good. On the what? On the evil and on the good. So he makes his son, he'll take care of your enemies. Yeah, you gotta worry about it. All this hate so talk will. and all that. Listen, I'm a witness. And we'll when, let When you people know. go against us and do things, they always get it. Yes. Hmm? I made a mistake once of cursing a brother and he was catching it. But I had to take that back. Because the Lord said, you don't curse your brother, I'm going curse all on you. So I had to repent of that sin. 
But let the most high. Remember he said, anyone who messes with his little one, they just like put a millstone on their neck. So I'll let him handle that. Go ahead. Alright. And and sins reign on the just and on the unjust. Verse 46. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? So if you just loving people who love you, what reward do you have? Go ahead. Do not even the publicans the same? The taxpayers, all these tax guys, all these other people, don't they do the same thing? Go ahead. And if ye salute your brethren only. So if you only talking to Israel only, what? if you only dealing with your own people, yeah. go ahead. What do ye more than others? So what, well, who are you? How are you better than them? You're no better than those other people. When you cussing them out, calling names, you thinking you better. Look, we all fall short. We all trying to get there. We all just waking up getting that cornbread out of the corner of our eyes. So how do you think you know so much and put yourself up here? I stay in here like a baby. Knowing every day stay I learn humble. something new, I stay humble. I don't have no pride. A prideful man has no place in my father's kingdom. Nowhere. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like prideful people. And that's I run the gays call it gay pride. Yeah. And that's something. Where we at? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Okay. Now, I want to read something to you. Because all this hate these camps and all. I'm going to Hebrews 13, 11 through 13. Hebrews 13, 11 through 13. I want you to get this. Remember, we're following Yeshua under his covenant. We're not under Moses' laws so of that hate and all that that, he, that a lot of these camps bring these other people. You understand? So I want to break out a scripture through the Holy Spirit to edify this point. Sister Mikhail, go ahead, please. Hebrews 13, 11 to 13. Yes, ma'am. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Wherefore, Yeshua also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. With what? Who's going to sanctify the people? Yeshua. Now, he said... The, 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 he says they the, the, uh, before all these beasts was coming in and they were sacrificed, you understand, without the camp, right? Mm -hmm. But now he's saying Yeshua is what the sacrifice. Go ahead. That's right. Go ahead. Um, suffered without the gate. Verse 13. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him. Now let us go to Yeshua. That, that's what we need to follow. Let's go to him. Go ahead. Without the camp. Without what? The camp. Without what? The camp. Without the camp. Bearing his reproach. Bearing his what? Reproach. He's embarrassed at the way they are right now. He's embarrassed at the way our people are acting out there. None of them are following Yeshua. None of them are teaching love. None of them are praying for their enemy. None of them are getting slapped on the cheek and turn the other one to give it to them. Yeah. Hmm? We can't be hearers of the word. We have to be doers of the word. You think you know Yeshua, you know my father, but you don't know him. You are one of those five virgins he's going to slam the door on and say, get away from me. I never knew you. I'm so serious. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Walking in the tour sets us free from sin and death. Um, I'm going to read Romans. Let's see here. Actually, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go to read, um, I'm going to go to... 1 Corinthians 15, 42 to 54. All right, 1 Corinthians 15. Mm-hmm. All right. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. Mm. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Mm. It is sown a natural body. Mm. It is raised a spiritual body. A what body? Spiritual body. Go ahead. Not physical. Go ahead. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening hmm. ruach. Hmm. How be it that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, mm -hmm. earthy. He's what? Earthy. Go ahead. The second man is Yahuwah from heaven. Ah. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also mm. that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, 
we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Mm. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahuwah. Flesh and blood cannot please the Lord. The Lord is a spirit. In order to serve the Lord, you got to serve him in spirit. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. So, to clean it up. in the last days, we go to Ezekiel, uh, second Baruch, he tells us that the, 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 he said the corruptible going to be changed to what? Incorruptible. incorruptible. But he says you can't inherit or be changed to be incorruptible if you sin. If your heart ain't right, if you're calling people names, cussing people out, doing all this stuff that Christ never did. Huh? You're a new age Hebrew. Or a new age Jew. A new age Israelite. Because you showed him acting like the ancestors. You, oh wait, I take that back. Yes, you are the Pharisees. My bad. Now. Read James 1, 12 through 15, please. That, that's one thing our people don't mm -hmm. get. Um, when it's talking about quickening the spirit, mm -hmm. it means you are revived and changed. Mm -hmm. You have to make that change. That's mm -hmm. a requirement. You have to do what? Make that change. You have to make that change. You have to. And it has to be a voluntary change. That's right. You understand? It has to be. You have to. Listen, he chose us. He just wants you to choose him. That's right. Sister Makai, can you please James, use James 1, 12 through 15, please? James 1, 15. I'll go ahead and read it. Blessed okay. is the man that endured temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life, which is which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, let no man say when he's tempted, mm -hmm. that I am tempted of God. It says, For Yah cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. He doesn't tempt any man. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away. Then, own when life. lust has con what conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and when in sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Get this, people. Everything we do out here, I don't care what people say. I heard a brother say, "Well, I don't buy that. That you know, it's demons and spirits. You know, it, you know people do this on their own." He right about that. But at the same time, when you break laws, them demons come. You got a spirit of envy, lust, deceit, everything. And when you break his laws, they come and they sit. So I had to read this to you. Most I don't tip nobody. You're doing all this on your own. Everything. All right, the last one we're going to read is Hebrews 6, 4 through 8. Hebrews 6, 4 through 8. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift so, and were made partakers of so, the Holy Ghost. So Ghosts. once you are born again in the Spirit, you're reborn, you're born through, you, 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 you got through water and you got through the Holy Spirit. That means you're totally different. You put on That's white right. garments. That's Go right. ahead. He said it's impossible. Keep reading. And have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Hey, like his visions he gives me. He shows me the future. Yes. He tells me who I am. He shows me who my wife is. He even runs a reel with people I meet and tell me everything they've done in their life and their parents, what has happened, all this stuff. Yes. Go ahead. If they shall fall away. And if I were to fall away. To renew them again unto repentance. In order for me to get repentance again, go ahead. Seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh. Hebrews 10, 26. Him, and put him to an open shame. All over again, go ahead. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh off upon it and bringeth forth herbs, meat for them, by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from Yah. Hmm. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected. What? It is what? Rejected. Hmm. And is nigh unto cursing. It's not unto what? Cursing. Go ahead. Whose end is to be burned. That goes back to Ezekiel 38. When he says he's going to raise up the wheat with the chaff. He's going to raise them up together. But he says in the end, He's gonna, excuse me, that's Matthew. Yes, right, you're right, baby. That's Matthew. That's what helped me. And at the end, he's gonna bundle them up. 
and he's gonna burn the chaff and he's gonna store the wheat in his storehouses. We know the storehouses, the New Jerusalem, New Zion, where we gonna be. But one thing I want you to know, I gave you testimonies, we gave you visions, we're sharing how we should walk under Christ's covenant, not under Moses' laws, which are done away with, but under Christ's new covenant. There were modifications, and under his covenant, he tells you, the laws are not done away with. Why? Because without laws, we sin. Remember the Lord said the whole earth is going through it because the Torah is not even being felt. No one's even using it. Except for a select few. Many are called, but few are chosen. It's been Brother Yabril, the Sister Micaiah. Like and subscribe. Make sure you Please like and subscribe at the bottom. And one thing I want to tell you, I love you. And I love all people. I'm like, it's like the disciples when they came and they told Yeshua, your mother and your brother's out there. And what did he say to them? Who's my mother? Who's my brother? He said, all those who follow my father and follow me, that's my brother and that's my mother. Shalom. And have a very blessed Shabbat.